UK Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Hi guys, uh, do you hear me? Okay. All right, so let's let's wait for a minute. Uh, uh, just wait for a minute or two, and then we'll start up. So, anyone has any doubts? Did it, uh, everyone uh, create any 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 classes and any constructors, any super class, and uh, come up with any kind of other different examples? Any doubts from anyone? We can discuss right now. This is Ajit. Hey, Ajit. Uh, hi. Um, so I have a question. So if you are uh, making a uh, constructor for a class, right? Mm -hmm. So can we add uh, some logic to it or it is just to initialize things? It is basically only for initializing. So if we, uh, let's suppose I have uh, something, because uh, I just had a same scenario where mm -hmm. I have a constructor and I have to uh, initialize the session and then get the database connection. So okay. I was creating that session in that one. I was actually getting that session from mm -hmm. another class right. and then um, getting that session in that constructor itself. Right. So is right. it a bad thing or? A... Uh, see, I mean, uh, yes. Uh, initializing or connecting to the database is is not uh, something like you're doing some logic there. Okay, you're trying to in before even your uh, constructor is uh, the time your object is created, you are getting ready with some connections there. Okay. By the way, okay. uh, that's not a good practice. Also, uh, base, you can even use a static block, uh, which we are going to discuss down the line. Okay. Uh, okay. Even we can uh, have some methods also in order to get the connection. So it's always good. To it's a good practice to uh, use some methods to get the connection. Okay. Constructor is basically used for only for initialization. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll show you what I did. And, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Because I just want to have a good practice of code and then uh, right follow that. Okay. Um, still folks are joining. So anyone else have any kind of doubts? Um, I have one question. Mm -hmm. um, um, Madhu. Um, the last week videos regarding uh, how to connect to the uh, GitHub, mm -hmm. um, I I still don't understand exactly how to do it. Can you quickly show it once? Okay, all right. So I'll just take uh, five the minutes. The video quality more. was very. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I I couldn't see anything. So sorry, I I all couldn't right. get it. Okay, not a problem. Okay, so you have the URL with you, right? Yes, I have. All right. It. So what you can do is, if you so let me just take the same URL. Uh, GIT. Okay, so this would have, would have been the same URL which I've given it to you. So that is your. Okay, so this is the URL which. All right. So this is the URL which I have it right now. The, the same thing you also must be having it. So what you do is uh, go to your Windows, open Perspective, Others, and just click on the GIT. Okay, just double click oh, okay. on this. So this particular on the left hand side, if you can see GID repository is going to get open. So in here, what you do as of now, I, I already have it. So what you do is you just, uh, oh, let me do one thing. I think I've checked in all the files. 
I'm going to even delete this. So let me confirm that. Mm, commit. Okay. So I have nothing left here. So, okay, let me delete it. So I'm deleting all the, all the things from my uh, local repository right now. So I have nothing right here. All right. So if I go to my GID repository, even let me delete this also. Remove delete repository, delete and delete. Okay. All right. So as of uh, the moment you come to your GID repository, you will see something like this. Okay. It will say add, right. uh, clone or create a new local repository. So just the one you copied, the URL, uh, just come here. Uh, you can just click on your uh, clone uh, repository here. Okay. Uh, this one on, on the second one, the middle one, or otherwise you can just directly copy and paste it here somewhere. Just click on here and just paste. It. And the moment you see this, you will get all these informations here. And uh, because the one which is already there in your clipboard, it is going to get copied here. And you don't have to give any username and password. Uh, it is only for uh, me because I'm doing some modification and I'm checking the file. So for you, you don't need anything. Just say next and next. And uh, you can check very well, check on this particular checkbox, import all existing project after clone is finished and say finished. So your uh, repository has been added here and automatically in your uh, package explorer or your navigator, all these things will be added to your machine. Okay. And then you can very well run uh, all the, all the examples from here. Actually, I'm getting error when well, I said next, an uh -huh. error occurred when trying to connect with the GitHub. April, uh, it shows the URL. Mm -hmm. uh, possible reasons it says is the uh, uh, incorrect URL, no network connection. Might be the network connection would have been some problem with there. Uh, but that, that's how it is basically. Uh, another is dot .git is missing at the end of. The Did you copy the entire thing, the one which I have given it to you? So make sure you copy the entire stuff, okay? Starting from here to here. Just follow I this. Think again. Jaram, mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you paste uh, it in this the is Lydia. Yeah. Yes, Lydia. Uh, I think uh, I think I also had it, but uh, um, I, I think I mean I slightly remember he, he has to select GIT like you know when you dr there is a drop down menu and when you click on that you have to prior prior to doing that you have to select GIT uh, source or something uh, uh, there is nothing as such as GIT not yeah. there uh, after say next and then it gave me an option of uh -huh. selecting somewhere okay. I remember mm. I don't know where it is okay Madhu just try this time otherwise uh, I'll, I'll sit uh, with you and see see that host yeah, is I GIT I, I, I think, I think that's it I, I yeah. think the the URL you pasted worked fine. I think maybe I have I had a uh, missing the uh, oh, okay. uh, dot .git. Okay, all right. Okay, yep. sounds good. Like okay, there is a question here. Uh, what is the difference between uh, constructors and class uh, setters? Uh, which is better? Uh, so the question uh, is so which is better? Basically, a constructor and the class setter, which we are going to see it right now. So let's, uh, Keith, uh, just wait for a minute. Uh, I'll just uh, talk about the uh, methods first now, okay? And then we'll talk about the setters and then I will talk about setters and getters both. And then we'll talk about uh, this particular problem, okay? Just stay tuned. Okay, so let me go to the workspace now and uh, coming back to the previous examples, let me just recap what we have learned. So we spoke about uh, a woman class, we spoke about a men class, we spoke about a human, right? And this human is a super class because uh, this is as human uh, and it has got a couple of properties. And this uh, and uh, you have got some constructors here and uh, multiple cost constructors here. And you have got men at last. Uh, okay. You have got uh, men right here. And as you see, uh, the moment you invoke this men automatically, your uh, constructor is going to get invoked of your super class. And here in this uh, woman, you basically see here, instead of, uh, I even have a constructor here, right? So in order to invoke my existing, I don't want to have this here in place. So what you have, to, you can do is you can basically call your uh, 
call your constructor using your super okay the same thing i've done it here and i haven't done it here just to showcase that this is also a way to do it and the other way out also you can do it okay now here it is okay because you have only one uh, variable or one instance variable to initialize it okay but when it comes that in your human class you have got multiple variables here which already your uh, human constructor with having three arguments in it is taken care of so there is no point in having again the same piece of code written here right so for that reason what we can do is so i don't want to have this in picture sorry i don't want uh, these things in picture okay so what i can do is i can uh, basically have i mean replace these three lines of code with a single line of code by saying super okay now here again one th this is one more objective here we are basically not uh, overwriting the code right or we are not uh, writing anything which is extra so here first of all it is object oriented okay so we'll you'll see what is the use of object oriented also all right so here in this case i'm just wasting i mean i mean i'm i'm just uh, uh, utilizing the resource which has already been used so i'm just removing this okay i can even comment this and i can uncomment this one okay so this is my main objective here and constructor what is the main use of a constructor it is only for initializing things okay now uh, next is let's try let's try uh, having some methods in it okay now till now we spoke about uh, the main method right now okay and some states all right now let's say you have got long hair long hair length now, uh, uh, Jairam, yeah, I'm sorry. Just before uh, before uh, going further, I just have a quick question out there. Mm -hmm. uh, you created a constructor uh, which is same as the uh, super class constructor, right? Uh, Suppose if you not same uh, as, only so the signature is different. But yeah, the signature is different. Right. Uh, but uh, okay. if you don't include that constructor, um, is the constructor from the super class is automatically inherited? I uh, no, no. Constructors are not inherited actually. Okay, you have to explicitly call that. Okay, got you. Okay. All right. So here uh, I'm not using anything. Now this is all about uh, the methods we saw the constructor and we even saw uh, how to uh, overload the constructors, right? Now usually uh, when you talk about uh, let's say uh, a human, when a human has got uh, he is six feet. Uh, he is six feet tall, and uh, he is having good sportive build, right? So basically, he is fit for playing basketball. So how he plays basketball depending on his height, whether he has to jump two feet or he, he has to jump three feet to reach the basket, right? So those are kind of behaviors. Now, when when I talk about, there are two things. One is your state, and one is your behavior, right? Now here in this case, if you talk about human, human has got some properties, or in Java world we say it is a state. So human has got a state as name, he has got a height and he has got a country. Now depending on the country, depending on the height and depending on the name, he might be behaving uh, somewhat different. Okay. So let's talk about the behavior right now. All right. Now, uh, here I'm going to say, I'm going to talk about some methods. So let's say, uh, let us start creating a method methods right now. Now every method in Java, okay. Uh, Okay, we'll do one thing. We will create a new package. I hope everybody are pretty much well aware with the package structures. What is a package and what is the use of a package right now? At least we are, there are a lot of other things also in the package. Uh, we'll see uh, down the line as well. Okay, so as of now, I hope uh, you guys understood uh, what why did I use a package here? Just in order to make sure that okay, whenever I'm teaching. Uh, extends example or uh, uh, super class or subclass examples. I'm basically using a package in order to keep all my files there. Okay. Now my topic will be uh, methods. Okay. So for that reason, I am having a packages methods. So let me say new class and uh, let's say annual. Okay, so I created a uh, class animal and let's say uh, string color and I'm going to say 
uh, string int length okay and uh, a string breed all right so i've got uh, three instance variables right now color length and breed and uh, what i'm what i am going to do is i'm going to say uh, some behavior let's say uh, what is the behavior of an animal okay so here in this case i may even have a constructor also i can say animal as a constructor right and i can initialize with some uh, initial values so let's say color equals to uh, black okay let me even not do this let it be like this okay and there is no point in having a constructor without uh, initializing anything okay now here in this case i am going to add up a method right now the way we have seen a, a public static void main method right the same way we are going to have a method and if you remember if i say main method here every method in java will be having a return type that means he is returning something now in this case it is returning void right so you have to specify what it is what it returns basically now let's see a small example right now uh okay i'm going to say public so this is the signature basically and for now i'm just going to say public void uh print my behavior okay now this is a typical method which i have created right now uh with a return type as void we'll see what is the difference between a void and when you try to return something uh very very soon you are going to see that okay now here in this case i'm just saying public void print my behavior now what i want to print basically i want to say uh sys out okay i want to say here uh my length is plus length okay so it whenever you try to invoke or let's say i want to call this particular method on a particular animal he, this method is going to tell what kind of animal it is okay the way you used to say uh, on the animal dot color or dot length or dot breed here i want to do some functionalities okay i want to do some functionality let's say i want to say here if a uh, length equals to equals to, or length is greater than 2 right uh, gth i want to say if the length is greater than 2 then uh, say that let's say i'm going to say he is a huge animal okay my length is 2 plus i am a big animal all right so this is a kind of behavior i want to put on to a particular uh, animal whose length is more than 2 else i want to say here i am a normal animal okay animal okay now this is how basically we create a method now how do i invoke this method okay now in this case if you see uh, if i create an instance of a class when i say creating an instance of the class that means i have to use the keyword as new right so i have to say animal a and i equals to new animal all right and i can basically say here uh, animal dot color right so with the help of uh, animal dot color right uh, okay so what i have to do i have to say sys out so with the help of this uh, this reference okay what i can do i can only uh, access the, uh, the 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 properties of this particular class till now all right now with the help of this i cannot basically print anything okay so what i what i am doing is right now i am trying to invoke a method or i want to invoke the behavior of that particular class to understand what is a behavior because as i said 
depending on the state of this particular animal okay let's say i am going to create two animals let me have a constructor here string uh, length okay so i am going to say this dot uh, length equals to control v and control v okay now uh this is your int all right now here i'm going to say i'm going to create uh, two animals let's say one animal length is one so this is your uh, pomorian pomorian dog and the other dog is let's say i'm going to create an, uh, one more uh, let's say animal okay uh, whose length is four and a dog let's say, sorry an animal whose length is uh, four let's say he's a tiger right now i created two animal one is a pomorian dog okay and one is a tiger mm -hmm. uh, how does the program know that the value in the brackets one or four is the length uh okay all right i think uh, we already had a discussion on this because here the moment you say you create two animals here right so in this case if i say uh, let me open the paintbrush here now here in this case this is your uh, heap memory and the heap memory when you say animal or uh, two animals right i created two animals here in this case if you see this i created one pomorian uh, pomorian dog uh, and one tiger let's say okay so there are two animals one animal has got a length of 1 and the other animal has got a length of 4 so what happens the moment you say new of animal okay so in your memory what happens and yeah that part that part i understand mm -hmm. uh, this is so you don't have to go over it again i understood that the, how does it know that one is the length of the animal that's what i want one is the length because okay you are using the constructor here right so what happens the, you are passing the value here and you are initializing okay. the instance of that particular animal as length here okay gotcha okay sorry i missed that okay i okay. got it thank you all right now so right now what you are doing is you are creating two uh, two animals one with one uh, length one the other one with length four okay now what am i going to do is i am going to invoke the methods of that particular animal right so when i say uh, pomorian dot print print my behavior and even i'm going to say uh tiger dot print my behavior okay so what i'm what i do i am right now invoking the methods to in order to understand the behavior of the animal okay so i can do lot more functionalities using this particular method okay you basically control the complete flow of the logic using some methods you cannot do any logic uh, here somewhere i cannot copy and paste anything here right so all the method all the logic has to go inside a method itself in java all right so that is the key factor here so anything i cannot write anything even though if you say uh, system dot out dot println anywhere in the body of your class that is not permittable okay now everything has to go inside a method itself all right now only thing what you can do in a class you can basically uh, create some instance variables okay and you can initialize them and that's all okay and other things we'll see we'll we'll talk about uh, some static blocks and stuff and all uh, just stay tuned all right so here let us see what is going to happen right now the moment i right click run as uh, java application so the first one where i'm saying print my behavior i on which particular object i have invoked the print my behavior i have uh, invoked on pomorian right so that uh, the length is 1 so it is saying i am a normal animal okay the next one when i'm invoking tiger dot uh, print my behavior it says i'm a big animal why because it is checking for a condition here right so depending on that i can basically invoke uh, i mean have some uh, behavior of this particular animal i i know that okay the moment i say print my behavior i am basically i am trying to understand what kind of animal is that okay 
so this is the basic signature of, of a of a method so as i said every method should either have return type or not okay so here in this case i do not have any kind of return type and i'm just trying to access this method because i want to print something here okay now uh, the way we saw in the previous examples uh, we spoke about uh, overloading your uh, constructors right here in this case there is a constructor with one argument here there is a constructor with two arguments sorry three arguments okay so depending on that uh, what happens during uh, during runtime itself the moment you access uh, your constructor with three argument so basically your this this particular constructor gets invoked okay if you access this one obviously this is going to get invoked okay now the same thing let's see here uh, we will see the same thing using your method overloading all right now how do you do your method overloading now right so what i'm what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy this okay the same uh, method here and enter so what basically it does is as you know in the same case with your constructor also you cannot have the same signature of uh, two constructor in the same class itself right so if it says duplicate method uh, print my behavior in type animal right so it says uh, one quick fix available rename method with some other name i don't want to do that because my main objective is to teach what is a overloading here okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say uh, i'm going to say uh, let's say string uh, read all right so what i did is i have overloaded this particular method right now okay now if you can see i'm having uh, the same method name right written type is uh, same but the entire, on uh, when you talk about a signature everything comes comes into picture so your signature should be different between two two methods in a in a class so in that case only you say it is a method overloading okay now the same thing i want to do some functionalities here okay i'll just copy this and paste it here all right uh, now when i talk about breed i can even put some condition here if the length is greater than 2 and uh, breed okay um uh, equals to equals to let's say pomo okay so let me just copy this and paste it here So I basically want to say that if the length is greater than two and uh, if the breed is equals to let's say tiger, so it is going to say uh, okay, and the breed equals to equals to tiger. So it is going to say my length is so and so and I'm a big an animal, right? Else if the breed equals to pomo, then it is going to say I'm a, I'm a normal animal, right? So depending on uh, now right right now let's see what's going to happen if I run this uh, class right click done as java application it is very well it is going to invoke which particular method if you see this this method is going to invoke because i am basically accessing the method without any arguments the moment i add something here let's say tiger okay so what happens you are basically passing this value tiger to this particular method okay and during a runtime this method is going to get invoked all right so right click run as java application all right so i i even may say animal dot 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 so right click run as java application wait so here what's happening my length is four my length is four i'm a big animal wait uh okay let me just comment this out and let me even comment this out okay so on this pomerian Okay, I'm just calling it this on the Pomerian, right click. So 
obviously uh, it is going to say right click run as java application all right so it is going to come here right and uh, i'm actually working on a pomerian right now and when you talk about a pomerian here you said the length of the pomerian is one okay and even i'm giving a value as tiger so for that reason it is not even matching if if condition nor even it is matching your else condition okay so I, what i can do is i can just take out this else condition here okay so it all depends on your logic what you basically do it so right click run as java application it is going to say i am a normal animal here right now okay so, well the main objective here to understand what is the method overloading so depending on the signature of your method yeah, that particular method is going to get invoked. Okay. Any questions? Jeram, very quick question. Mm -hmm. So, if if when you pass the argument, if it is a different data type, is it still considered as overriding? Uh, now, if you see, if you add a different data type, first of all, your your uh, let's say I'm going to say int. Let's say I'm going to say ten. Let's say example. Right. First of all, you will get a compile time issue. No, if you if you have two different methods, mm -hmm. one is uh, one is data type int, mm -hmm. the other one is string. Okay. Are they considered uh, two deep? I mean, uh, overloading. Yes, it does. Okay. okay. So in this way, now if you can see here, if I'm I'm going to pass uh, ten here, my this particular method is going to get invoked. Let's say sys trace plus uh, let's say I'm integer. I'm going to say I am integer. Okay. And H2K Emphasis provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training. Hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com.